everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring polynomials. This is going to be at least a two-part series. All right. So enough talking, let's get into it. In this lesson, we're going to factor polynomials and then we're going to determine how long division connects to factoring. All right. The questions that you have to think about when we are doing this and which you have to answer, how can polynomials be simplified and applied to solve problems? Truthfully, that first question, you don't really have to worry about that one. This is a question we're going to see later in a different topic. But these two questions here and here is what we got to focus on. How can two algebraic expressions that appear to be different be equivalent? How are the properties of real numbers relate to polynomials? These are the two things that we have to consider. All right, to be successful in this lesson, you should be proficient with polynomial division. This is something that we've been working on for quite some time. So if you are still struggling with polynomial division, you should um, come practice with the videos posted. You can do Kahoot to practice with. Or you could, you know, seek tutoring. You have those three options. All right. Also, you should know what zero remainder theorem is. Zero remainder theorem is quite easy. We discussed that last class period. And again, that's a video posting specifically on that. You should know what is a factor. But in case we forgot, we will address that in a brief moment. And this last one, we're not going to worry about that because this is something that you will learn after Labor Day weekend. So let's talk about factors. For example, if I was to ask, give me the factors that give me the product of 45, you would say 9 times 5 is a factor. And then you also say 15 times 3 is also factors of 45. Am I right? But we also were of the commutative property. For example, 9 times 5. We could say 5 times 9 are factors of 45. 15 times 3 is a factor of 45, but also 3 times 15 is a factor or factors of 45. When you take your quiz at the end of this week, this is something that you're going to have to have background knowledge of going into the quiz and also going into this lesson. All right, we're going to have data talks. So look, one thing about me, you're going to pretty much know where you stand academically and you're just going to know everything that goes on around the class in terms of um, data. But listen up, data is a number that tells a compelling story all right so when we talk about data it's compels compel us give us something to really really think about it really creates the narrative and describes how we are like for example when I'm talking about data in terms of my class this pretty much describe how you are as a student in mathematics so let's get into it 
All right, so this is your Kahoot data from the most recent data. So when we was prepping for the remainder theorem, we were at 69% average. So that's not correct. So we was one point away from a C. So of course it's not good. This is something that we have to practice on. But here are things that really got us in some trouble. Well, I guess I don't have that data about, I don't have the detailed data about the three things, or maybe I do. But let's talk about polynomial division. So I was very happy when I saw this report. This is a 70, this is a 74, which we know now is a C. So you guys get the hang of polynomial division. So it's cool. So we could get ready and move on to the next thing. So by looking at this data right here, this says that you guys got an average understanding of polynomial division. So we can move on. Usually anything less than a 70, definitely less than a 60 for sure, means that we have to do some small groups and some additional review. So good job on the polynomial division. All right, so some of the multi-steps equations. Now, of course, this got nothing to do with polynomials at the moment, but I know that we had to do some more review because we got F, so we're struggling with that. We need to practice this because when we get deeper into polynomials, we're going to have to solve some serious equations, and we need to get the equation situated. All right, review for the very first week of school. So this is us solving equations, simplifying fractions, geometry stuff. So I expect you guys to score this because you guys was on summer break. So I do not didn't expect you guys to hit high, but I was pretty impressed for you guys getting a 62%. All right, so remember that first Kahoot I was talking to you guys about? The Kahoot that was talking about the getting ready for the um, zero remainder theorem? So we struggled a lot with the greatest common factors. So this question here, the greatest common factor of 48 and 80, we know you guys said 8. Now, I lied to your face saying that's the correct answer just to see who was going to catch me, but no one catch me. The correct answer was actually 16. So look, so 48 and 80. The biggest number both of these have in common is 16. All right. You could go 16 times 3. And you could do this on your own to see what I'm talking about. To give you 48. And then 16 times 5. Which gives you 80. So you guys are more than welcome to do just that. And that was the question that messed us up. So, we're going to be practicing some greatest common factor because it's going to be essential. All right, so here's some indicators as I was going through these, as I was observing you guys in that with the Kahoot. 5B and 8B have always perform the best with these cahoots. The majority of the cahoots that we done, it was always 5B and 8B being in first place. Last class period, 8, 8B in particular did so well, they had no homework. In addition to that, they hit the bonus points too. 
So the reason why a certain class had more homework than other this, others is because of the mastery of the subject. When you master something well enough, you don't require too much practice. And A B, you know, did exceptionally well. Due to the over the top academic performance and achievements, A B is the only class only class that has open notes for the big quiz this week and again like i try to tell you when you work hard i always reward you so again a b is the only one who has open notes for the quiz everyone else do not have open notes and you don't Three A will be the only class to use the generic calculators. My main issue I have with three A, besides the the obsessive behavior, is the lack of responsibility of the calculators. Calculators drop; they're all over the place. So I'm not gonna make you debt. I'm not gonna give you brand new calculators, or even the other ones where you could damage those too. And other kids after you won't have access to those calculators because you're choosing to be irresponsible. Um, I'm going to be running through grades, not double checking because when I put grades in, I'm always spot on. But anyway, I'm running through the grade book, you know, updating it, and we will discuss after Labor Day. So when we come back from Labor Day. You know, we're going to talk about grades, see where we at, and go on by our business. Also, I do, do, didn't write this down, but remember, if you are absent, I need the excuses. If I don't have no excuse, I can't give you make up work, so it count against you. So please, have excuse work. You turn to attendance, please make sure, make sure, make sure you find a way to provide me a copy. Announcements. Let's go ahead and get into the news. All right, so usually after the big quizzes, I don't give homework after quizzes they are big. But unfortunately, like that weekend, you guys have homework. If you choose to dodge out of school, knowing that you have homework, it's going to kind of get you even worse. So you may want to go on by your business and get it. Again, I must we must have a copy of the excuse. You have three days to turn the excuse to get the um, makeup work. To pass algebra two, you must follow all math protocols, which is getting homework and stuff. You are responsible for all academics, even if you are gone. Or even I'm gone. And the reason why I stress this is not because all the lessons that I teach are pre-recorded and posted. So you guys have access to, you know, these lessons. You are responsible. Unless I approve, I approve, no food allowed in my classroom because you have tendency of leaving food. You tend to leave mess in my classroom. All right, now 1A will have possibly, possibly, there's a possibility that 1A will have this quiz after the um, Labor Day break. Our other periods will have it at the end of the week. When you're away from school, and I highly recommend this for everybody, download Google Classroom to keep up with information. Parents who are watching this video, please make sure you have access. Subscribe to my YouTube to watch pre-recorded lessons. All that's there for you. It'll be all in Google Classroom. In September, we're going to start practicing ACT. Remember, ACT and ACT workies is the only exemption that I will give. When? 
how we do things in math and algebra too. This is how this is going to work and will work. After I go through a single example, this is how we're going to do things. After I teach it from the dome to the paper, that means that's for you to work independently, quietly, trying to figure things out. All right. That means you cannot ask me for help because I'm not going to give it to you. That you can't ask no one else for no help either. When you are struggling, that is for you to look at your notes, for you to write down some questions so you can get the help in our next procedure, which is, uh, which is from the paper with the partner. This when you you know talk about the work, ask questions, all this, then the third. And I'm still not involved. I'm watching. I'm facilitating what you are doing. All right. After you did start with the partners, from the partners with the teacher, I will gladly address any misconceptions. I'll gladly answer questions and all that stuff. And that's why I have been doing, and I will continue to do. This will not change for anybody. You are not allowed to ask for help from the teacher until you complete steps one through two. Again, if you are stuck, use your notes. Write down some questions so we could get to all of that to figure out. The reason why I want you guys to think for yourself is because you will be amazed at what you can actually do on your own. I want you to figure this out on your own because once you do, you're going to feel amazing about yourself. It is a great confidence booster. So try it. And remember, you're going to make mistakes because that's okay. Because math spells mistakes allow thinking to happen. Mistakes allow thinking to happen. That spells math. That is how you're going to get through it. You have to make your mistakes to get it correct when you do the quizzes and tests. All right, now let's get into the lesson of factoring using various methods. So remember the precise definition of mathematics is the technique to explain, understand, and manage reality by cipher, counting, measuring, classifying, ordering, inferring, and modeling patterns arising in the environment. Okay? So, as I have told you guys before, math is a series of techniques to help us understand and manage the reality. All these things that we, all these adjectives, you do majority of them on a day-to-day -day basis. Ciphering, you do on rare occasions. We just don't realize we are doing it. Because it's not I th often what we're trying to cipher in. So if you're interested, look up the word ciphering and see what does it mean. And let's not forget about the zero remainder theorem. So it basically states that if P of C equals zero, then the remainder theorem tells us that P is divided by X minus C, then the remainder is zero, which means that X minus C is a factor of P. So this is going to be essential for today's lesson. All right. So to sum up what we did in class, for example, if I had x squared plus 5x plus 6, if I was dividing by x plus 2, I realized that all I have to do when it's x plus 2, I just make x equals negative 2. And then if all I had to do was to plug in negative 2 for every x you see.
So we know that negative squared, negative two squared, because the two is outside the parentheses, is going to give me a positive four. But five plus, I mean five times negative two, gives me a negative ten. And then if I was to add six, that gives me that is going to equal zero. So therefore, x plus two is a factor. All right, this right here is a fine way to get through the factor of today. All right, so let's move through it. All right. So what is a polynomial? Remember, it's an expression that can have multiple terms, such as a monomial, which is just one term, a binomial, which is two terms, a trinomial, which just has three terms, a polynomial that has more than three. However, exponents must have at least at least the degree of zero for example 10 10 by itself is called a constant because 10 could be rewritten as 10 x to the power of zero and we know that anything to the power of zero is going to be one so it's going to be 10 times one which gives me 10 Alright, 10x is a monomial, x squared minus 49 is a binomial, and then you have this right here as a polynomial. So remember, a constant is a polynomial because it can be rewritten x to the power of 0. For example, 1000 is equivalent to 1000x to the power of 0 from there. A thousand times one equals one thousand. All right. So the forget by essential questions of today. Keep in mind how we're going to do this. So we could move on. All right. Remember 35z plus 49? I want you to find the greatest common factor of this binomial. Pause the video and try it out. Welcome back. By now, you should have completed this problem. If you have not, please, I beg of you, pause the video and try this out on your own and be amazed at what you can do on your own. So, did you pull out a 7? A 7 being the greatest common factor of 35 and 49 because 35 divided by 7 is 5, 49 divided by 7 is 7. And did you pull out the 7 and left the inside as 5z plus 7? If you did this, you are an amazing person. All right. Why don't you try this one out too? Pause the video and see what's up. All right, so did you realize that 6 was the greatest common factor of 18 and 48? And did you pull out the 6 on the outside left the inside is 3z plus 8? If you did that, excellent. All right, now I want you to try this one. Pause the video and try it. All right, welcome back. I trust that you did, you tried this out. If you have not, please, please, please try it. 
So let's look at it. The greatest common factor of all three terms, which is the trinomial, was 5. But also, 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 you may not have figured this out, that each of this trinomial have at least a x in common. For example, this 5x cubed, well, you got three single x's right here. And then the 25x squared, you have two single x's. And then the 55x, you have one single x. So they, you could take out an x because every last one of them have at least a single x. So, the greatest common factor in this case, not only going to be 5, it's going to be 5x. And then you leave the 5x on the outside and leave everything else on the inside. All right. Remember one of our essential questions about how something could be written so different, be equivalent to, towards each other? It's because when you use distributive property I'm going to call it as, as distributive so by distributive property what you get on the left hand side is what you get on the right hand side so therefore these are equivalent to towards each other because of that so, we just satisfied the essential question. And if you forgot about the essential question, please play it back in the beginning part of the video. All right? All right. So, when you factor out exponents like the problem we have just done, you got to keep in mind this. You are looking for the smallest x possible that the polynomial has then you're going to pull out the smallest x that they have for the polynomial so going back to the problem that we have worked we realized that we had at least not only just five but we have at least an x we could pull out for all three terms which is the trinomial which gives us just that 5x and we just realized that by the greatest common factor, this is equivalent to this. All right. Um, we're not going to talk about squares and square roots because that's something, again, that you would do um, Labor Day. Uh, I mean, after Labor Day weekend. So we ain't going to go through all this. So with that being said, are you ready for the challenge of this factor? So throughout the factoring, I'm going to give you steps of factoring in certain cases. I just need for you to just follow along. All right. So when you multiply a trinomial of ax squared plus bx plus c, when a is 1, and remember, when you see this, when you see x by itself, it could be rewritten as 1x to a power of 1. But in math, we don't do this because we know that this is the same thing as just x. All right. We don't write this because we know that this is redundant to what x is. All right. So let's do the, go through these first step, first four steps. So step one, determine what real given the product of c. So when we're saying reals, we're saying the real numbers. 
So our two real numbers give you the product of C. Step two, what are the real numbers that give you the sum of B? In step three, you have to make sure you have the same reals from both B and C. And then after that, you're going to put in factor form. And D and E are going to be the numbers that's going to give, the real numbers that's going to give us the products of C and also the sum of B. All right, so let's do this together. We're going to go step by step. So step one, we're going to determine the real numbers that gives us this product of C. So what it is, what are the factors multiplied together gives you negative 54. And we realize that negative 6 times positive 9 gives me negative 54. Okay? In the next step, step 2, we got to determine the real numbers that gives us the sum of B, which we realize that negative 6 plus 9 equals 3. Step 3, which is very, very, very important. Make sure you have the same real numbers for both B and C. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm saying that negative 6 times 9 equals negative 54, right? So that means I have to have the same two numbers, real numbers, gives me the sum of positive 3. So negative 6 plus 9 gives me the positive 3. So again, when you are you know, going through step 1 and 2, keep in mind that whatever you get to get to the product, those, you have to have the same real numbers to give you the sum. All right. With that being said, you're going to put it in factor form. So x minus 6, x plus 9. These are our factors. All right. If you need to go back because I went a little too fast for you, do that. So why don't you try this one on your own? Pause the video and let's try it. Welcome back. If you have done this, kudos. If you have not, please pause the video and try. Remember, if you just waiting for me to give you answers, you are hurting yourself. So for those who brought the problem out, let's compare it. answers. Did you do step one? Did you find two real numbers that give you the product of C? And did you get did you determine the real numbers to give you the sum of B? Did you make sure that both real numbers give you B and C? Did you put it in the factor form? Did you get X plus 7, X plus 3 as your final answer? Now, you need a brief explanation. We could do this. So for C, well, I'm trying to look for the product that gives me 21. I'm looking for the factors of 21. And I know that 7 times 3 is going to work. And now because I got 7 times 3, that means that in step 2, I have to find those numbers to give me the sum of 10, which I know 7 plus 3 gives me 10. In step 3, I have to just check the work and make sure that my numbers are the same. I had 7 
right here to give me a factor. I also have seven right here, which helped out with the sum. Then I have the three right here, which seven times three gives me 21. Also, seven plus three gives me 10. So this is very, very crucial to have. All right. If you got this right, good job. Kudos. You is all there in the bag of chips. All right. Now, let's use a zero remainder theorem to show that x plus 3 is a factor of x squared plus 10x plus 21. So we did the work. We know that when we did our factoring, we know that x plus 3 and x plus 7 are our factors. We know this already. So, with that being said, we have to use the zero remainder theorem to show that x plus 3 is a factor of this. So, let's do it. So, you get x. Why am I doing? Why am I doing long division? <laughs> I don't need to. So, when you're using your zero remainder theorem, you just set the divisor, which is x plus 3. You just set the 0, and you get x equals negative 3. So, from there, you want to take negative 3 and plug in for every x you see. All right. And when we do this, we get positive nine minus thirty. Plus 21, and when we add all these together, we get zero. Thus, we have proven the remainder theorem. So we showed it. So we factored by using our technique we just learned, and we also use a previous technique, which is your zero remainder theorem to get to the answer to be zero to show that x plus three is a factor. So we did x plus three to show that it was a factor of this guy right here. So let's not do x plus three. Instead, let's do x plus seven. And if we do x plus seven. Well, we know by skipping a step, we get x equals negative 7. And then we can plug in negative 7 for every number we see. Again, you could slow down, play this video anytime you like. So we know we got 49 minus 70 plus 21 and we know we're going to ultimately have zero so this just proves that x plus 7 is a factor of x squared plus 10 plus 21 and then x plus 3 we just proved that it's also a factor of x squared plus 10x plus 21 so on your quiz I may ask you to show proof that your factors that you have done is correct and to do that you have to show the zero remainder theorem and you have to factor. Ooh, we did a lot, didn't we? All right. Let's multiply trinomials of AX plus BX plus C when A is greater than 1. So that means when you have like 5x squared. So look, you have longer steps. All right? So multiply a by c. 
and remember a remember the original a before you multiply by a times c then after that rewrite a making it equals one meaning that if i got 5x squared that means when i rewrite it it's going to be just x squared i'm gonna keep the b b is going to stay the same but i'm gonna change c all right so from step three four and five and six these are the same steps that you did in the other trinomial when a equals one so determine the real numbers to give you the product of c determine the real numbers to give you the sum of b make sure that you have the same real numbers that gives you both b and c put in factor form now step seven and eight is different you you have to divide e i mean d and e by the original a which that's why i told you to remember a in step one if a does not divide by d or e move in front of the x All right, so let's go through this difficult problem step by step. Step one, multiply A by C, but remembering A before you multiply by C, because A is something you will see at the end. So two times five is 10. Step two, rewrite by making A equals one keep B and change C so when you do that this is what it's going to look like x squared plus 7x plus 10 now before you confuse yourself at this step please pretty please sugar pie honey bunch keep you this is my this is what you're working on this original trinomial does not matter the only thing out of that old trinomial is the two everything else does not matter all right step three similar to our other trinomial of a equals one multiply the real numbers that gave you the product of a c which we know two times five is ten but also two plus five gives me the sum of b Did you? Well, I'm sorry. Next step. Make sure you check your work. Make sure that you realize that 2 plus 5 equals 7, which gives us B. But 2 times 5 gives me 10, which is our new C. And don't forget, you are still right here. This is where you are at. You're right here. You is not over here no more. The only thing matters from here is just the two, which you're going to use at the end. All right. From there, put our numbers in factor form. D becomes two, E becomes five. From there, remember the two? I told you that was the O A that does matter. Why don't you divide? All of that by the original A, which was 2. So 2 divided by 2, that gives me an integer of 1. 5 divided by 2 does not give me an integer. It gives me a decimal point. And because of that, I have to move the 2 to the front. Thus, my answer is going to be x plus 1 because 2 divided by 2 does give me 1. But 5 divided by 2 does not give me integers, so therefore I move that 2 in the denominator to the front. All right. 
I want you to try this problem on your own. Just try it. You never know. Welcome back. I trust that you tried this problem of your own. If you have not did it, I beg you please pause the video and try it on your own. Because you never know what you could you could figure out. Alright. So did you multiply A times C to give you 18? And did you realize Well, let me hold that back. Did you rewrite it by making the A become 1? You kept 11 and you kept 18. Did you multiply 9 times 2 give you 18? And 9 plus 2 gives you 11? Did you double check to make sure that you got the same numbers to give you B, which was 11? And did you check to make sure that you got C when you multiplied using those same two numbers? And before you get confused, don't forget, you are using this guy here. You're not worried about this no more. This is done with. Except for the 3. The 3 is the only thing that matters. All right. Did you put in your factor form? Did you divide everything by the original A, which was 3? Now divide by 3. Did you get an answer of 3? And when you divide by 2, divide by 9, how you realize you didn't get an answer with that and move 9 to the front? If you did those steps, this is the answer you shall have. Good job. All right, factor by grouping. This is easier, I think, because you have to do only three steps. Put into binomials, factor each pair of binomials, place the outer terms in front and the inner terms in the back. For example, you have this polynomial. Let's group them, which was step one. And we group them, you get 2x plus 4 and 6x plus 12. So that's us grouping. And because 6, let me address this, because 6 was positive, you're just going to leave that 6 right there because that's understood to be a positive 6. All right? So we put in by no, we put into binomials. Step two, we're gonna factor out each pair of binomials, and we do this by G C F. And remember all the greatest common factor stuff we did earlier today. So in case you forgot, let me address it. So you got like three x plus 12. In this binomial, the greatest common factor was 3. So it's going to be 3 and then x plus 4 because we know 3 times 4 is 12 and 3 times x is 3x. Alright. We know Going to this example, 3x squared plus 12x, we know that the greatest common factor is 3 and x because 3 is the greatest integer that they have in common. And then the binomial has at least 1x in each turn. So you got 2x's right here. And you got one, but before you could get to the two over here, you gotta get to the one x. So therefore it's gonna be three x 
x plus 4. All right. With that being said, let's factor out the pair of binomials of this guy right here. So when we do that, in the first binomial, the greatest common factor of 2x plus 4 is just 2. So you get x plus 2. All right. In the second group, the 6x plus 12, the greatest common factor was 6. And you got x plus 2. All right. So we're going to place the outer terms in front and then the inner in the back. So you get 2 plus 6 because we took the outer terms right here and then the x plus 2 which is the inner and we leave it right there. I know some of you guys want to add 2 plus 6, which gives you 8. But for this purpose of what I'm trying to get you to do, don't do that. Leave it as 2 plus 6. Do not add, do not make that 8. I promise you, you're going to mess yourself up. All right. Let's move on. And these are the three steps that you have to do so why don't you try this on your own so try this one on your own all right I trust that you have if you did not try it please pause the video and try this on your own you'd be amazed at what you could figure out on your own but if you have, let's move on. Did you group them by binomials? If you did, good job. Did you, for the first group, got the greatest common factor of x squared and you left the inside as x plus 4? If you did, good job. Did you, in the second binomial, factor out of 3 and you got x plus 4? Good job. And did you group the other terms first, such as this x squared plus 3 right here, and did you leave the inner terms alone? Now, by now you should have figured out something about the other terms. There's something that you should have figured out on your own. I'm not going to tell you and spoil it for you. But this is a learning opportunity for you to figure out and who knows may bag an extra bonus point if you can figure it out all right we have made it to the end homework 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 is these problems right here what i want you to do for these problems and again if i'm going too fast just pause her rewind. Make sure, make sure you, when you're affecting the trinomials that has a equal one, factor it, but also check your work by using the zero remainder theorem. But when you have, when you factor a trinomial where a is greater than one, just factor it like the steps that said. All right. In addition to, I may pull a cahoot for the fact of my grouping just to see where you can be.